Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, this is joint work with Greg Martin, who's a political scientist at, at Emory. Um, still fairly new, just the first few times you've been presenting it, so we look forward to your, your feedback. Uh, the, we're asking two research questions about cable news, so Fox News and MSNBC. First, what are the persuasive effects of these slanted cable news? Do they change how people vote? Okay, when you consume more Fox News, do you vote more often for Republicans? Okay, at the same time, how important, what are the magnitude of taste for like-minded news? Okay. Uh, and you can think about having, when both of these effects are present, can they interact to generate polarization? Okay, so you take somebody who's at the middle, okay, somehow they get shocked to watching Fox News. Okay, if they have a taste for like-minded news, then they're going to watch more. Okay, and that sort of feedbacks, feeds back into a loop. Okay, so we want to see if, we, if that exists and can we quantify it. Uh, the approach is we're going to estimate a model, okay, it's basically a three-part demand model of allocating time to watching news channels, subscribing to cable or satellite TV, and then voting in presidential elections, and we're looking at 2000, 2004, and 2008. Okay, and here's the, the main ingredient, okay, the key assumption is we're going to use channel positions in the cable lineup as instrumental variables for how much you consume different news stations. Okay, so if your Fox News is in channel 35 or 45 or 55, where MSNBC and CNN are, it's going to um, do sort of a costly search story, make it more or less likely that you consume those channels. Okay, and then we're going to use that as an instrument to, to estimate voting effects. Now, obvious concern is, well, are channel positions endogenous themselves? Okay, we're going to have sort of a, a two-pronged answer. In the presentation, there's more stuff in the paper. I think the most convincing answer to that is we're going to look at satellite subscribers, okay, in the same zip code. Okay, satellite subscribers face the same channel positions everywhere. Okay. Um, they look a lot like cable subscribers in terms of observable demographics. Okay, so if cable channel positions are chosen endogenously to um, accord with political taste in that zip code, then it, they should also predict viewership for satellite subscribers, those channels, and they don't. The way this is going to work is most of the high watch content is in low channel positions for historical reasons. So that's the sense in which being lower is going to be better. So you just finished watching something, you're going to switch, browse, surf to a new channel. You start from, you press guide, okay, you start moving away from that channel. Okay, and you're going to be more likely to tune in something close. It's like a, a choice from lists uh, type of story. Okay, so why should we care about this? You know, it's sort of easy audience to convince. I think what I want to point out here um, is that Fox News is a phenomenon not just in news but in cable television. Okay, so primetime Fox News is two to three million viewers per night. That puts it in the top ten cable channels overall. Okay, not just news channels. Uh, and it's not the same people watching every night. Okay, so the reach is actually quite large. Okay, MSNBC and CNN themselves aren't aren't bad either in this respect. Okay, so even small amounts of persuasive effects can affect elections. Okay, and obviously, you know, if you've tuned into any of these, you, you know they're different. So it's like the typical thing, um, looking at them covering a similar, the same story. So this is Benghazi. We started writing this paper. On uh, Fox News, they had Donald Trump saying on the phone, you can see him uh, implicating Clinton in a cover-up. And, you know, MSNBC is much more, you know, we were open about the, the attacks. Uh, okay, MSNBC, maybe everybody doesn't realize, has, has slanted liberal since 2006 about. Okay, and we'll, we'll show you evidence of that. Okay, so it started off as sort of a centrist channel and okay, went, went liberal. Okay. okay, some more why should we care? So I came at it from an I.O. point of view. This is actually how we got the idea for the instrument. The question is, does the media sector need special regulation? Okay, when you look at media mergers, of which there's been several large ones, and there's several large ones under consideration, um, sometimes there's the policy uh, makers act differently towards this, the, the news, news sector. So in the Comcast NBC vertical merger, Okay, which occurred in 2010, there was a condition um, that Comcast had to place Bloomberg, an independent news channel. They had to move the channel position near to these so-called news neighborhoods, Fox News, MSNBC, where, where they existed. Okay, that's something they did only because it was a news channel. They could have done it. You know, Comcast, NBC was acquiring movie channels, sports channels. They could have done it for those, but but they didn't. Okay, it's got our, our results have implication for endogenous product positioning. Okay, how do you? How should you choose the slant of your news channel when there's also this persuasive effect? It's not something we look at, but somewhere to take it. Um, from a, a political economy point of view, 
uh, you know, we know that there's been increased polarization in Congress. I think there's some sense that it's also, though not as settled amongst, amongst voters. Okay, does the media have any uh, interaction with that? Okay, uh, I'm gonna try to point out a lot of caveats about our analysis. I mean, just, just in terms of things we're ignoring off the bat. Okay, so there's multiple media for news, your know, radio, internet, you know, more and more on the internet. Uh, we're not gonna be you know, acting as if, we're gonna act as if those don't exist. It's, there's, whenever you think about regulate, regulation in this sector, it's not clear you can always do what you wanna do because of First Amendment issues. And there's a lot of existing evidence, uh, or a, fair, uh, a few papers suggesting that, you know, maybe we shouldn't worry that much about the media moving around people. That's just part of a healthy, healthy uh, society. Okay. Okay, and just a, a quick preview, we're gonna find large what I would, I would call large effects of, of both Fox News and MSNBC. The MSNBC is concentrated in 2008. Okay, so an extra hour a week of Fox News we're gonna associate with uh, a 10 percentage point increase in the probability of, of voting Republican. Okay, a moderate taste for, for like-minded news. Um, and this is something I'll characterize later, that if you take a group of median voters and look at the ones who get shocked to watch Fox News, okay, they will converge according to our model estimates to the Fox News ideology within three to four years, so about one election cycle. Uh, so let me just, just quickly, there's been a lot of research on does the media affect behavior, okay? Several people in this room have, have very nice papers about that, um, cited in, the, in, the, in our paper. Uh, so what's our contribution? So one is to introduce this new sort of research design instrumental variable, which are channel positions to estimate effects. Um, I think it could be used for in many other contexts that have sort of been brainstorming. Uh, we find large effects, larger than the, the previous literature, okay? Um, the, the closest paper, obviously, is, is by Delavine and Kaplan, who, who have an estimate of Fox News effects based on rollout. Okay, we think we have, have quite a bit larger effects, though. It's a little bit hard to tell because there's some measurement issues that, that came up. Um, when, in the course of doing this research, we, we realized some of the, the data in that paper aren't, aren't well measured, okay? So we're still trying to communicate with the authors and, and get that correction. To, to what those uh, what their results actually say, um, and also you know we explicitly account for satellite availability, which wasn't a feature of that paper. Okay, and finally we find uh, also this MSNBC effect. Okay. Uh, the other sort of s the segment of the media bias literature was, you know, ignoring the the persuasive effect. What are the tastes for like-minded news? Okay, so again, Scott and Shapiro's paper in Econometrica. Um, so our contribution to that strand is to sort of embed the persuasive effect in, into the, a very similar type of model, allow for the possibility of a feedback loop, okay? Putting in that framework makes it, allows you to correct for things like selection into satellite and talk about heterogeneity amongst consumers. Uh, though we don't really do anything on the supply side, we do find that channels are differentiating and slant more over time. Okay, okay so just, just quickly so you know how this is gonna go tell you about the data, including how we estimate ideology for each channel. Then I'll sort of do like a reduced form, two-stage least squares analysis. Okay, then I'll give you the, the model of, of consumer behavior, the three-part demand model estimates and, and the polarization dynamics at the end. Okay, okay so we use several uh, data sources. So the key one are these channel lineups. So you should think, for those of you who watch TV, when you hit guide, okay, you see all the channels and you can scroll up and down. These are the, the ordering of those channels by zip code, by year, going back to 1998. It's the Nielsen focus data. It, viewership is gonna come from two other data sources, Simmons and MediaMark, they're very similar surveys. Okay, they ask, so from there we get the zip code so we can link to channel position. Okay, hours of each channel watched per week, that's self-reported, okay, demographics, and um, whether you're a cable or satellite subscriber. Voting are gonna be individual level surveys so NAES and CCES. Again, we have zip codes, so we can link to channel position, demographics. Okay, then a question, who do you intend to vote for in uh, the presidential election? Okay, we're gonna look at um, 2000, 2004, and 2008. These are repeated cross sections. Okay, they also ask, what's your most watched cable news channel? So a binary, uh, a binary uh, viewership. Uh, and then for ideology estimates, you know, following Gedskow Shapiro, um, we're gonna use text-based measures, so the broadcast transcripts of these channels and compare it to the, the congressional record. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So what's the, the variation in channel positioning? So variation in channel position, so these are uh, kernel density estimates for each channel. I tried to match the colors to the, the slant. 
Um, so I'll talk more about, so throughout the talk, I'll, how our channel, where do channel positions come from? Okay, so just institutionally. You should think of them sequentially when the channel was added to the, the system. Okay, in cable, there were three waves. Okay, there was the initial national cable channels in the late 70s and 80s. So think of the big, you know, ESPN, MTV, CNN, Nickelodeon. Okay, uh, and those are going to occupy the lowest position. Okay, then there was this new technology, digital technology that expanded capacities. Okay, mid 90s. Okay, and then you had an influx of entry. Okay, I'll show you a bunch of the history channel, Food Network, and so on. Okay, and those were all being added at those times. And it, was, it was a little bit chaotic. Okay, so that's what's. Uh, and then there was a third sort of uh, post-digital age with the even more niche channels. Okay, so uh, CNN tends to be low because it was quite early. Okay, and Fox News and MSNBC entered around the same time. Okay, so their means their means are close. Um, in terms of ordinal positionings, you know, CNN is typically lower than Fox News, typically lower than MSNBC. Okay, but even the ordinal positionings can can change around. Okay. Here's a, a scatter plot. Uh, the the y-axis is the Fox News position, x-axis is the MSNBC position. Okay, another thing that creates variation in channel positions is some managers decide to group news channels together and create like a news neighborhood. Okay, so that's why you see the the weight on the on the diagonal. Okay, but not always. Okay, and this is um, getting at the point that the mid '90s was a sort of a tumultuous period. Okay, and all these channels were being added at the same time. Um, so at the top is so the y-axis is the number of national subscribers for a channel. At the top is ESPN. So if you get cable, you get ESPN. Okay. So that's like how many potential subscribers you could have. Okay, and these are a set of peer channels to Fox News. So channels that entered or had similar viewership numbers around the time of Fox News's entry. Okay, some of these are now themselves very popular channels, like History Channel is a top 10 uh, cable network, FX, Bravo. Okay, these are not super niche channels. These are actually quite Comedy Central, quite popular channels. Okay, and these were all growing very rapidly during this period. Okay, and they're all being added to different systems at different times during this period. Okay, and that's the sort of the chaotic di dynamics that are creating uh, different channel positions for Fox News and MSNBC within a, in a system, across systems. Okay. Finally, there's one other ingredient that could um, sort of create randomness in Fox's position that, that's in the business press. Some cable systems during this time were capacity constrained. Okay, and if they wanted to add Fox, they had to drop a channel. Okay, so there's actually, you can find news articles talking about how some cable channels were very upset that they were being dropped to be replaced by Fox News. Okay, and those were a variety, like up to 12 different, different channels. Okay. okay, just to give you an idea of viewership, so Fox became the most popular um, news channel sort of early on, okay, early 2000s. Okay, so in our data, it surpasses CNN in 2004. Okay, if you look at primetime, it surpassed CNN earlier, already by 2002. Okay, and at the very end, so this is post the, the sample we're looking at, even MSNBC starts to, to surpass CNN. Okay, just to give you an idea how much this is people um, watching Fox News on average about 1.5 1, 1. hours per week. So last part on the data, we're going to do the, the channel ideology estimation. Okay, it's involved following very closely against Gus Shapiro, um, comparing language used by Fox News and MSNBC and CNN to um, Congress people, okay, basically regressing nominate scores, measures of Congress people, person ideology on phrase usage. Okay. Now, the issue in this sort of this procedure is that there's way more uh, phrases than Congress people. Basically, have a variable selection problem. Um, what we use is slightly different. Uh, you know, the idea of using text is the same. Okay, we just use a, a elastic net. Okay, it's like the lasso regression. Okay, so it's a, a minimizing sum of squared res residuals with a penalty for how many variables you have. Okay, I think fairly fairly standard. Okay, then we get estimates on, for each phrase, how much does it predict congressperson ideology. Okay, then we plug in the cable channel's usage of those phrases, okay, to get a predicted cable channel ideology. Okay, we, we remove, so we basically take out your fixed effects. This is um, something that is probably worth discussing after, has some effect. Okay, we, basically we saw too much variance across years. Okay, that all the channels were moving up and down, so uh, we made that ex post adjustment. Okay, we also do uh, plus or plus or minus one year smoothing, moving average smoothing procedure. Okay, so this is what comes out of that. Um, so Fox is an, 
in red, CNN in purple, MSNBC in blue. Okay, so in the early period, well, Fox is always more conservative. Okay, and what what we pick up here is is MSNBC's sort of tilt to being liberally slanted. Okay, which happened between 2004 and 2008. Okay, so that shows up when you do this. Um, one thing I want to mention here is something I think is probably going to change during revisions is that if you look at the magnitude, we're actually estimating that Fox and MSNBC, Fox in particular, is not that conservative. So less conservative than the median Republican congressperson. Okay, now, uh, I think one, one big ingredient that's missing is that we're, um, you know, the most conservative content tends to, tends to be in prime time. That's when most people watch. Okay, we're just taking a random sample of transcripts throughout the day. Okay, you might think it's an issue, like it, you might want to weight the front page of a newspaper more. Okay, it's something, the sort of thing we, we haven't done. Okay, but this is what comes out, and this is what we're, this is what we're working with. Just like, just like our predecessors, we just want to show you that the, it picks off text that makes sense. Okay, these, are, these words are stem, these phrases are stemmed, but you know, if you look at, say, in 2000, negative is associated with liberal, positive with conservative. You know, break, tax break for the wealthiest is, is liberal. Federal bureaucracy is conservative. Okay, in 2002, Reagan said is conservative. Uh, social justice is liberal. You know, these things make sense just like the other procedures do. And I guess one thing worth maybe maybe interesting is that in 2010, the most indicative phrases were all conservative phrases. Okay, so like print money, government mandate, grow government, that sort of thing. Okay, so let's jump into the into the data analysis. So uh, uh, we're going to start with just sort of a, a two-stage least squares analysis. Uh, the first stage is for each channel, how many hours do you watch? Okay, on demographics, channel fixed effects, year fixed effects, and uh, channel positions. Okay, so there's three channels, and in each regression, there's the three channel positions. Okay. Because there's cable, so cable TV watching, most people, the median number of hours watched for every channel is zero. Okay, so there's a big mass on zero. Okay, then a, a long tail distribution. We're going to model that. Okay, so. Uh, there, for each channel, there's two regressions. One for are you a zero, and then conditional on not being a zero, how much do you watch? Okay, I'll show you just the combined regression for, for clarity, okay? But when we, our model estimates are based off the, the uh, modeling explicitly the mass at, at zero. Uh, and then when the second stage is, do you intend to vote Republican on election fixed effects, demographics, okay? And then predicted hours watched of the different cable channels. Okay. So, because there's no, we don't have a data set where we have both hours watched in a continuous measure and votes. Okay, there are two different data sets. We do the first stage on the viewership data set. Okay, but we can take the coefficients and project on the voting data set how much you would have watched because all the x's are the same. Okay, so this is the first stage. So we're going to think both about sort of relevance and and validity. Okay, so uh, each column is a different cable news channel. And then the rows are the are going to represent the coefficients on the channel position. Okay, so on the diagonal is the own position effect on hours. Okay, so what it says is uh, people watch more CNN okay, when it's in a lower position. Okay, people watch more Fox News when it's a lower position, and uh, people watch more MSNBC when it's in a lower position. Okay, and there's also some substitutability. So the the MSNBC effect is positive on. Okay, so when MSNBC is in a high position, people watch more. Fox News. Okay, and the magnitudes are implied, and they're about the same for all three channels, that if you move from the 75th percentile channel position to the 25th percentile, that's about 10% uh, more viewership, okay, which is like six minutes on average. Okay, now, uh, can we trust this as an instrument? What if channel positions in Republican areas, Fox News has a better channel position? Okay, well, if that's true, and if satellite subscribers look like cable subscribers, okay, then the Fox News position should predict Fox News viewing by satellite subscribers. Okay, and that's what this bottom panel is. Okay, so you want to match up these coefficients to the to the top panel. Okay, so for CNN we get a strong negative effect. Okay, now on the diagonals we get uh, close to zero estimates. The CNN one actually changes sign. Okay, these are both negative. Okay, but they're close to zero. Okay, if it was really just Endogenous positioning, you'd think they'd be centered on the, the cable, the cable position. Okay, and we can reject 
uh, equality between uh, the own channel positions for cable and satellite subscribers. Okay, for all three of the diagonals, it's like easily rejected. Just more on the placebo. So, you know, even if satellite subscribers were just more conservative uniformly, okay, we'd still expect a, a correlation as long as it's not that strong. Um, so it's okay for them to be a little bit different. It's just they can't be you know, uncorrelated. Okay, and I went through the other, the other points here. Okay, now when we do the uh, implied second stage, okay, this is when after we do the modeling with the mass on zeros. Okay, so the first stage now has, has two regressions per channel. Okay, we plug in predicted hours watched. Um, those are our coefficients where uh, it's measured in, in hours. Okay, so one additional hour per week we associate with 14.7 uh, percentage points. Uh, more likely to vote Republican, MSNBC, minus 10. Uh, the variation in the instruments and the magnitudes aren't that large, right? So 10% viewership is only about six minutes. One standard deviation is only about three minutes. Okay, so projecting to an hour it might be might be a little bit dubious, but that's that's what comes out in the, in the regression. Uh, and now what, what we do in this table is we just take our projected hours per year. Okay. Yes. That's right. Yeah, so for the 2000 election, we get um, a 2.5 percentage point swing. No, much, much larger. That's, why I'm saying, no, but it's in the same that's right, same units. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay, so in this table, we take our predicted hours watched, okay, and we interact those with year dummy variables in the second stage. Okay, and what's notable here is that the MSNBC effect only shows up in 2008. Okay, which is consistent with that MSNBC was a centrist channel okay, until about 2006. Uh, now, there's one thing I, I, I've been, been thinking about that I'm, I'm still trying to sort through exactly. Okay, we see the Fox News effect sort of accumulating over years. Say we just had the year 2000 effect, 14 percentage points. Okay, since channel positions are correlated strongly over time, Okay, having a low channel position in 2008 means that you probably had a low channel position for many years. Okay, so is that, you know, how much of that 14% is just, a, you know, how do we uh, allocate that over in sort of a dynamic sense over time? Okay, that's something we're, we're still thinking about. Okay, so now in, we're going we're gonna, to uh, build a model that we're going to try to use to explain this and get some implications. Uh, it's basically a three-part demand model. Okay, so one part is do you buy, purchase cable or satellite? Okay. Conditional or nothing. Okay, you don't have to get one of them. Conditional on the uh, choice. How much time do you allocate to the cable news channels? Okay, and then finally, who, which presidential candidate do you vote for? Um, the agents in this model are consumer, viewer, voters, okay, who differ in their demographics, their zip code, and their ideology and uh, taste shocks for channels. Um, the ideology and taste for channels are going to be endogenous variables as well. The timing within an election cycle is you choose whether to subscribe to cable satellite or neither. Then you choose how much to watch, conditional on the package you get. Okay, then your ideology evolves depending on how much time you watch and the, ideal, and the ideologies of the channel you watch and your initial ideology, and you vote. Okay, so voting is the last part. At that point, your ideology is fixed. Okay, we just basically randomly sample uh, viewer, voter, consumers and ask, are you to the left or right? of a cutoff point for that election. Uh, we have to initialize the ideology distribution. Okay, So we do that by uh, doing a BLP on uh, vote shares at the county level okay, to get county level ideology distributions from the previous election. Okay, So we start this off in 1996. Uh, this is the, the model of how do consumer viewer voters allocate their time amongst watching Fox News, MSNBC, CNN. Okay, uh, so Consumer I, who has access to channels in package J, is going to choose the amount of uh, hours or minutes watched of channel C to maximize this utility function. It's basically a Cobb-Douglas utility function, okay, where they have a taste parameter, gamma ICT. So that's consumer's eyes chase uh, taste for channel C and period T. Okay, now there's a vector for each consumer, one for each news channel, okay, and that's going to be made up of first a probability of being someone who has a positive taste. Okay, and the conditional on being positive, you get a draw from an exponential distribution. 
Okay, that's just to match the, the shape of these distributions in the data. Uh, your draw draws for both are random that depend on your demographics and channel fixed effects, okay? And channel position for whether you watch. And then conditional on watching, the same thing. So channel fixed, channel year fixed effect, demographics, channel position moves around how much you watch, conditional on watching. Okay, and here's the, the against Gauss Shapiro, taste for like-minded news term. Okay, so parameter eta times the, the square of the difference between your ideology and the channel ideology. Okay, and the channel ideologies are those things we estimated via text. Okay, we're treating those like data. Okay. okay so we expect eta to be negative. Okay, if there's a taste for like-minded news. Okay. Channel position, higher positions should also make you watch less. Okay. Now, this is the um, ideology evolution part of the model. Okay, so your ideology in period T for consumer I, okay, evolving from period T minus one is gonna be a function of how much you watch each channel okay, and the ideologies of those channels. Okay, it's governed, the key parameter is this parameter rho, okay, we call the influence parameter. Okay, so if rho, as rho tends to infinity, you move instantaneously for whatever channel you watch the most. Okay, if rho is zero, you don't move. Okay, and then it's in intermediate values, it's in proportion to how much you watch and what are the ideologies of those channels you watch. Okay, what model of updating gives you this? So here's one, okay. Um, so you have a normal prior over your initial ideology. You receive normal signals. Okay, they could be a, a, a where rho determines the rate of those signals at a constant precision, okay? And, you know, the assumption we're making is that agent treats, sig you know, they treat signals from the channel as uncorrelated, okay? So they, even though they know what the channel's ideology is when they're choosing, because they have a taste for like-minded news, so when they get signals from it, they just incorporate that, okay? And when they get multiple signals from it, they just double, you know, keep counting. Okay, that's the model we use. You know, we're not, I'm not sure this is the right model of how consumers update their ideologies. It's something that gets cited all the time in the media bias literature, so we just went with that. I think the channel position instrument could be useful for maybe discriminating between these models. It's not something we've done yet. This is sort of a mechanical part. Um, subscribe to cable satellite or, or, or no uh, subscription television. Okay, so that's the VIJ star. That's your indirect utility from your uh, channel news, cable, news channel consumption decision. Okay, and there's a uh, package fixed effect and then a, a logit error. Okay, so this is, this is BLP. We're not gonna estimate price sensitivity. We just hold the, the deltas fixed. Okay, all the heterogeneity across consumers is coming from differential tastes for, for news channels. You could do something where people care about ESPN and, and so on. You know, it's just more computationally more, more difficult. Certainly you're gonna choose satellite if, if your cable package didn't have CNN or didn't have Fox News and you like, okay, we can do it either where you account for the channel position or not. I think it's more realistic not to, like who looks at the, the lineup. Although the, the resubscription decision, do I leave my cable provider, might depend on how happy I am with this. So I could see that going either way. And I've never looked at the, you know, is, are the channels I like in good positions? Okay, so estimation, the key parameters are the row, that influence parameter, okay, eta, the taste for like-minded news, zeta, the um, effect on of channel positions on viewership. Okay, then we have all these sort of extra parameters, channel demographic tastes, uh, channel year fixed effects. Hanging in the background, okay, we're gonna estimate by, by indirect inference. Okay, so what does that mean? We're gonna guess a set of model parameters, solve the model, okay, which is solutions via simulation, take the simulated consumers, run the exact same regressions that I showed you the results to, okay, and just match coefficients. Okay, we wanna min minimize the difference between coefficients. Okay, so it should be a very, uh, both first stage, second stage, and importantly, the OLS, misspecified OLS. The taste, uh, that's right. Okay, so I hope that's, that should be uh, quite transparent, what's driving what, we'll come back to it. So these are the, the estimates we get hard to uh, interpret, so let me move to some elasticities. The standard errors are in progress, they should reflect the significance levels in the, in the regression at, at, the, at the least, but uh, we'll, we'll update the, the paper when we have those. So this table gives you the elasticity of, of hours watched with respect to channel position. 
okay, for different demographic profiles and ideology, initial ideologies. Okay, and why am I showing such like a, a table with, with so many uh, rows and columns? Well, I just want to give you a sense for the, the amount of heterogeneity that you can build in into the model. Okay, so you know, a 30 year old black woman will have a different sensitivity of channel position for MSNBC than for Fox News that's different from different demographics and so on. Okay. Uh, you know, just this, this discussion of, okay, what's, you know, we have a model, we're going to get estimates for the model parameters. What are driving those model estimates? I think it should be fairly transparent. Okay, the, and this is sort of in the sense of, of the uh, recent Genska Shapiro paper. Okay, what parameters are sensitive, or what, uh, excuse me, what regression co what parameters are sensitive to what regression coefficients? Okay, so the influence parameter is going to be uh, very sensitive to those uh, second stage um, coefficients. Um, the taste for like-minded news, okay, so this was the discussion with, with Jesse. In the indirect inference, we're matching the first stage, we're matching the second stage, we're also matching the OLS regression, the, so the misspecified OLS regression. Why is that? Well, imagine I came to you and said, hey guys, I'm going to estimate the effect of Fox News. I'm going to regress. Well, you vote Republican on whether you watch Fox News. And you guys would say, well, no, you're mixing two effects. Republicans watch Fox News because they have a taste for like-minded news. Okay? And that combines both the taste for like-minded news and any influence effect. Okay? So what we're saying is, well, we get the influence effect from the IV, okay, and everything else explains the OLS coefficient. And all the demographics and channel year fixed effects let's just have very direct analogs in the, in the first stage regression. Okay, so there's, there's a variety of counterfactuals we can do. Um, we've started some. There's some in the paper that are sort of at a more preliminary stage. I'm going to keep it very uh, conservative in sort of how far, I, how seriously I take the model. Uh, what I want to, what we're going to do here is take a group of, of ideology zero voters. Okay, they're going to get shocked with taste for the different cable news channels. Okay, coming from the, the fixed effects for cable news. Okay, and the question is, how quickly do they spread apart? Um, so this is, this is one graph. These lines represent, so they all start at zero. These lines represent the mean ideology amongst consumer viewer voters who, get sh who have uh, their highest shock is for that cable news channel. Okay, so on the red is the mean ideology for people who get shocked with a high, with Fox, with a high uh, level uh, taste for Fox News, okay, and CNN and MSNBC. Okay, and what we find is it takes about four years for them to converge to the ideology level of those channels, okay, according to our model estimates. Okay, uh, this is a, the same the same experiment, a different way of, of looking at it. Okay, so we just have a, a kernel density. So these guys are all on zero. It's just the, the bandwidth parameter. Okay, over time. This so is year by year, what happens to the distribution of ideologies according to our model estimates. Okay, so you see a big mass that stays at zero. Those are people who weren't shocked with any Fox News, MSNBC, or CNN, which is a large part of the population to watch any of these channels. Okay, uh, and then you can see the people spreading apart, okay, towards the ideologies of each of these channels, okay, where they ultimately end up, okay, after about four to, four to six years, they, they converge to those positions. I wanna talk about some, some weaknesses so, okay, so I mentioned we're un probably underestimating conservativeness of Fox News. You know, additionally, a text analysis can't pick up tone. You know, you can actually look when does Fox News use democratic language. It's usually they have either making fun of the language usage or something like. Okay, uh, how would you really want to do this? Well, if you had panel data, you could see people over time. So we don't have panel data. You might think that there's a joint distribution of row and, and eta. There could be heterogeneity in those parameters. Okay, which we've assumed the same parameter for both for everybody. Okay, this was brought up earlier. Uh, we don't have external shocks to ideology between elections. Okay? So all your ideology movement is coming from, within an election cycle is coming from how much you consume um, Fox News. And then we rule out any other news sources and technological change. Okay, so uh, you know, if you listen to talk radio, none of that is, is sort of in the model. We saw that that increase in the Fox effect over time. So we think there's something to, to look at there. That's right. Okay, thank you.